Hello, good morning. Hope you are doing well. Please go and uh, just subscribe to our channel. It will help you to have many videos or the notifications of the videos we are uploading. Okay, we are going to talk about uh, performance uh, measurements. And uh, uh, we have many ways to measure performance. Uh, one way is uh, to measure efficiency. Even uh, measuring effectiveness, productivity is also ways to um, measure performance of uh, a company, an industry, or whatever. Okay. Okay. Fundamental for performance measurements. We are we are we are measuring performance of what and why we are just doing it. Okay. We can measure the performance of uh, economy activity or decision making unit like a farm household, a commercial farms like dairy farmers, financial institution like bank, and, and so on. And now, as I'm just uh, saying previously, we have many ways to measure performance, like effectiveness, uh, efficiency, productivity, even profitability. Okay, then we'll be just giving those details on different ways to measure performance before to talk about uh, efficiency itself. Effectiveness is the uh, ability to meet or exceed a set <clears throat> target and uh, also focus on output and ignore input used. But uh, the difference with the efficiency is not only uh, we, are, uh, we are willing or uh, we want to achieve the, the, the target, we, we are focused also on resources, uh, how to, to handle resources we have. Like the example I can uh, I can just have around here is we have company A and company two B, and now suppose the target output is ten, and as you can see the company when uh, reach target, company B also reach the target. But in terms of input use, can we see company A use only two units of input to achieve this ten, and uh, company B use uh, five to achieve this ten. At the end, we can say that the company B is effective since uh, it reached the target, and now the company A is efficient. Not only it reached the target, also to use the it, it, it reduces the, the 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 quantity of input used. Okay, so what we are that's the difference about effective effectiveness and and, and efficiency. Okay, and also talking about productivity as uh, one of the major. Uh, of performance, we have what we are calling national productivity, uh, where we are just talking about a single input like uh, labor productivity, land productivity. We have also a uh, total factor of productivity, uh, which is the ratio of the aggregate output and the aggregate input, like all what whatever is produced, uh, the all quantity produced and the whatever is 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 used as inputs. Okay, to measure also efficiency, okay, because we are talking here about efficiency, we have different approach. We have uh, an unparametric approach, which can be called data development analysis, and we have also an, a parametric approach around. Okay, stochastic function. We have also semi-parametric approach, but let us talk about uh, the non-parametric and the parametric approach. Uh, Stockard frontier as a parametric approach you know, has those characteristics. The production of two subjects to uh, random shots, not under control of firm manager, and that's a functional firm. And what is also very important here is it only allows a single aggregated output. What does that mean? When you have even different kind of output, you know, and so you have you need to combine them in a single output, like the aggregate out to before to be to use a stochastic function analysis. Okay, and we have another one which is a non-parametric data development analysis. Here also the, this one also has a, its characteristic. And uh, uh, here what is also is important this one is allowing uh, multiple output like uh, from your company and see if you have many output you can consider them uh, output one, output two, output three and so on. And, and, and use uh, this uh, data development analysis. Okay, whatever the structure of your data or whatever your, your company or your industry is producing, you can choose the non-parameter or parameter to do whatever you want to do. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, here now, 
uh, if what we, we we need to do or want to, what we want to do is to measure uh, efficiency and uh, as we are saying we have different kind of efficiency we have technical efficiency which is the use of the best uh, available technology and now when we are talking even te about technical efficiency we have a two way to go with it we have input oriented uh, oriented techn technical efficiency and output oriented technical efficiency okay a company is um, technical efficiency uh, based on oriented input on technical efficiency. When this company is able or is capable to reduce the kind of uh, input she, uh, is, uh, this company is using and uh, and keep all constant uh, output, meaning that before we have some inputs, the, some quantity we are just using uh, to to get some kind also some some quantity of of output, but at some point we decide like to focus on input, like uh, to reduce even the input, but holding constant the output we are producing. At that moment we can say that a company is <clears throat> technical efficiency, but input oriented, and output oriented technical efficiency is the way when we we are focusing on output, like. Uh, at some point, we have a quantity, some quantity we are using to produce some a, 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 some kind of also some quantity of output, and now we decide or uh, we focus on output in the sense that we were able, we are able to um, add more output without even uh, adding the input, without touching the input, and we are managed to uh, we manage to get more output. At that moment, you can see that the company is technical efficiency that's in output oriented way. Okay. And then we have also what we are calling uh, effective allocative efficiency, the ability in choosing output in a revenue maximized way. Then from there also, you have a revenue based and cost based. But here is uh, is talking about the, the price of uh, 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 the price of those outputs we are producing, or maybe the price now, when we are talking about cost based, with the price of input we are using. If we can manage the price uh, to to make, to improve or to add more output, uh, our revenue, uh, we can just talk about revenue based uh, allocative efficiency. And now about um, <clears throat> cost based efficiency also is how to manage those prices our input price okay that is and now we have cost efficiency which is uh, now the product of the uh, technical efficiency uh, by the uh, allocative efficiency that is that in our case here we will be focusing or estimating technical efficiency output oriented okay then let's uh, talk a bit more about uh, technical efficiency okay to estimate technical efficiency we can use uh cobb douglas function or transfer function but we are not even just choosing it because we want to, to, to use cobb douglas or transfer we should um make some kind of test which can allow us between cobb douglas and from which one is better that is that in our case <clears throat> here the purpose is just to show you how to do that with cobb douglas we'll be having also other video how to show you how to do it with a transfer function. And here, I will be using cross-sectional data and uh, be aware that you can use also panel data to do that. Okay, then let me show you how Cobble Douglas function looks like. Okay, here, consider a country X, a crop width, and now we have three kinds of inputs. We have land, yeah, we have land, how to put a uh, labor, okay? And now the cobb douglas function looks like it is. Yeah, can you see how it is? Then we need to linearize it. And the linear form is applying a natural log and it will become something like this. Okay, at the end, some meaning that we need also, we need really also to have our data. We need to transform our data like the way it is around, around here, okay? Then, let me show you um, concretely how the data should be and how to, it to look like. Okay, say that you collect the data on land, okay? 
uh, the quantity of land, uh, land used, how to cut, the quantity of crop produced, the capital also uh, used, the, the labor and so on. Now, from here now, the transformation is you have to linearize it and uh, you have just to apply natural logarithm. <laughs> Can you see LN, EA, then say LN of this part and also all those input we are having capital, labor, and the land we will need to generate it. And this part only will serve us to do our complex things. At the end, we will get something like this. Also, when you want to see the factor also, the, if you have a factor like experience, uh, you want to see how the experience is influencing the technical efficiency of different uh, decision making you need to see you can you can add this uh variable in my case here we are adding uh something on the climate change to see if climate change has a effect and um, effect uh, uh, on on the technical fields of farmers okay let's now here we are using we are trying to use um cross-sectional data meaning that we have different farm if we are we are we are just uh, working with farmers, we are different farmers. We interview to see how their farms they are using this in their farms, or if it's company, we have different companies here. It's not only one company. Okay, that is okay. Now let us let us bring this one. Let us bring this one in uh, the starter and run it. Okay, then what I can just do is like to to copy it. Now we see in the cam here. Okay, then I have my, already my data around here in this data. Then we can do whatever we want to do. Okay, we are to just go back and going back here around here um, <clears throat> to do um, uh, this estimation. We are using SF cross as comment. And the SF cross, because we are just using cross section data, if it was uh, panel data, it will be different. And now we have all already our variable. This one is the, our dependent variable. This one, those one are the, those that are um, uh, independent variables. Okay. And now after it, we have to choose our model. Here we are using the model BC. And here after, we are talking about the output oriented or input oriented. We are estimating here, we want to estimate technical efficiency. Then uh, we can put there and put uh, O, -O like output oriented, and now also distribution. We need to choose our distribution. Yeah, let me see. Use TN. Okay, normal. And now, if I want to add the factor to see how my factor, the climate change, is behaving on on a technical efficiency of farmers, I can just put it at the end, like the way it is. Okay, and now we can run. Okay, and we have uh, already the result as you can see. Yeah, can you see here is where we are from the efficiency, inefficiency uh, of climate change output is, is produced like here when it's negative. Okay, let's say. I see that uh, the, the, the p value is uh, greater than 5%, of, meaning that uh, it's not significant, statistical significant. But if it was statistically significant and now it is positive here, the positiveness here is showing us climate change as uh, <clears throat> effect and effect on, on, on technical efficiency of farmers or negative effect. Since this one is inefficiency, which is estimated, then climate change will be, when it's positive, will be having negative effect on technical efficiency. That is, okay. <clears throat> Here also the error term, you have two components. We have this one and this one. But what is what is what is important here and what we need here is our technical efficiency. We need to, to, to generate it, okay. The, the model used was this, then we need to, to generate technical efficiency. Uh, adding the name of the model and for the uh, yeah, generate this at the end, as you can see, technical efficiency. We can go here and see 
aussi des différentes techniques pour l'efficiency generated for different forms and so on. And now let's go back and now summarize it and see how it will come. Okay, let me summarize my VC and we have here. Okay, the mean of technical efficiency of all farms here is 0 0.9. We have to remind that efficiency is between 0 and 1. When it is uh, closer to 1, uh, the more it's more, yes, when it's closer to 1, meaning that uh, the farm is more efficient, like the extreme one is 1, and the, the extreme at the, the left is 0. Like when it's 0, it's totally, the farm is totally inefficient. Okay, then those values should be between zero and one. But when it's one, at the moment, you can see that the farm is totally efficient. But when it is greater than even 0 0.5 and going above, we can see even that the farm is also efficient, but not, not totally efficient. But more, these values closer to zero, we can see that the, 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 the farm is, is inefficient. Okay, so what is, what is, what is happening really? And then now here the minimum efficient is like 0 0.9, 0 0.1 and the 0.998. It's very, very closer to one. Can you see what is happening here around? And then now here, for example, we can see that the average farm needs 0.1 percent to be completely uh, efficient, technical efficient, because we are just estimating technical efficiency. Okay, that's I think that uh, those kind of things will help you in your future study, if you need help or whatever you need, you can just you can just call us and 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 you can you can reach us. In we have our email there and our address, everything. You need also training or many speech, whatever. You can get in touch with us. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah.